All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Um, you guys have really been wanting this video for a while. Uh, you're asking me about the deck list that I'm playing with the voiceless voice cards, cash tier and branded. So today we're gonna go over that and we're just, just get right into it. All right, I brought this to the regional. I went to Providence um, on Saturday. Ended up, I ended up dropping because I wanted to top eight pretty badly, but uh, I, I lost in my one of my last games, round seven, there was eight rounds. So, um, and it was purely my fault. All the games that I lost, um, well, one of them, the individual cheated. We found out afterwards and he ended up getting a uh, penalty. But um, all the other games I actually lost were just my fault and I misplayed. But uh, this deck is extremely hard. It's not as easy as the traditional peer voiceless voice deck. I think this one, you have to know what locks you and what, pl uh, how you could play around those locks. So. Let's just get right into it, and I'll explain a little bit after. So, obviously standard, you're going to do the three voice, this voice, uh, low. Um, I am looking for a third one, but I, th I think I have one coming up. A third uh, QCR rare, low. Uh, I definitely need QCRs of Sephira, but we're going to do three of these. Three Sephira, of course. Let's get your engine started. You need it. It's non-negotiable. Uh, your two Skull Guardian. Uh, really good. You shuffle it back. So if you resource manage properly, then you two's fine. And then you got two Cerevis. It's good. This format against uh, targeting effects it stops Princess. And um, you know, just in general, it's a good card for negations. It's not once per turn as well. Both effects on the field and in the hand. So really good card to have in this deck. I'm gonna keep it at two for sure. Uh, one old man Cerevis doesn't need to be any more than one. Um, it is a card that also shuffles back your, your ritual spell, so it's good for resource management. Uh, I like the ratio there. We're going to keep it at one. The next package we play is the, uh, the one Trios and the three, uh, Diviner. This package is great. I'm not going to cut anything here. Um, you know, the space is tight already, but th I think this card is worth having in the deck, especially with this one as well. It dodges and perm and, and effect Veiler, so... I like those cards. I'm going to keep them where they're at. <clears throat> one Radiance. Uh, there is a debate to play more than one. Just because once you lose it, it's gone forever. But with the new card coming out, the Blessings, uh, one is fine. I'll keep it at one. And then three Barrier, of course. This card is uh, what protects you on your turn. I mean, on your opponent's turn. They have to attack a Ritual Monster. And they can't target any Light Monsters you control. So... Very strong card to have. Uh, sometimes I even make boards where there's two of them. So, so just in case they out one, there's still another one they have to deal with. So uh, the ritual spell, two of them. You need it. Uh, it's non-negotiable. I wouldn't play three. It could, it could clog your hand. And it could become bricky. So two is a good ratio there. Uh, then two pre preps. This card is really good. Um, if it resolves, you pretty much know that they don't have ash because if they did they would definitely ash this card it's a plus one and it gets her whole engine going so i have it at two some people play three i guess i could talk talk about this for a little bit two is good in my opinion because uh i realized with all the extra engines i'm playing um having multiple copies of this in your hand is not good because if they do stop one then you have a dead card in hand and also you want to see it enough so playing one is just not enough so two was the uh the number I landed on, and obviously it's to your preference, so I liked it too. All right, the next package is the Branded Fusion package. Uh, so Branded Fusion, right, the Albaz, and the Jalgen. So these cards are good. It's a five-card package, so it's pretty small, and it creates one of the strongest locks in the game, I believe, so um, with using Albion the Sanctifier Dragon. So as long as that card doesn't get banned and we can dodge it on the next list, then I think this package is a, a must play. Honestly, I think it's kind of foolish not to play this package. It wins me games consistently. So uh, I'm gonna keep that there. The ratios are fine. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to the next package, which is the uh, Cash Tier package. So that's three Fenrir, one Birth, and three Unicorn. So I found in my in my rounds yesterday at the regional and in my testing that unicorn once you get the birth is kind of just like useless 
So it's not useless, but it's not as impactful as it could be. I'm thinking about upping the count of the cash tier package to using one more card, which is the cash tier theosis, because you really want these two on your end board um, as early as possible. So theosis is a good way to go, you know, unicorn search, get theosis, and then get your cash tier fender out. Um, and that's why I said this deck's kind of difficult to play because theosis does lock you into XYZs after you use it. So you, it literally has to be like the last thing in your in your turn. All right. So that's the uh, cash tier package. Um, all right. Next part is droplet. You have, as of right now, you're at 45 cards. I mean, you're at 35 cards in the deck, which means you have five spots for non-engine. Uh, I, I don't think that's enough obviously so what i did was i did three droplet i did one called by the grave and then three prosperity now my reasoning behind this was because obviously five cards is just not enough to be impactful so you have to go over the 40 card um minimum so this card is 42 this deck is 42 cards i decided to go three prosperity because it digs into the deck more you want to see branded fusion as, as early as possible and you want to see you know, other engines that you don't see in your opening hand. So you can go Prosperity to look for Cash Tira first if you need it, or you can go Prosperity to look for Branded Fusion first, because Branded Fusion is also an engine piece. You can send Low, Sephira, Trios if you need to tribute a, uh, a Diviner. There's a lot of things that you can do with Prosperity in this deck, and there's so many lines, and that's why it's a difficult deck. And then I put in the Called By. You can obviously cut this if you need to and play 41 cards, but... I put in called by because it's a Saki card. It's really good because um, everyone's on hand traps. And if you haven't noticed already, this deck does not play any hand traps. Um, it is a machine though at breaking boards. Uh, and that's typically what I use the deck to do. And I found success in doing that. Now, like I said, the one thing that I'll change is add Theosis for the Unicorn because Theosis by itself is an impactful card. Even though it locks you in XYZs, you use it last and you don't really care. But Theosis will end your board with a, a ne uh, an extra interruption and in Fenrir. So um, that's the main deck. So let's move on to the extra deck. Extra deck is fairly simple as well. Uh, so I'll start off with the links. IP, Diamondo, Relinquish Anima, and SP Little Knight. Um, best extra deck monsters, SP, you know, the Relinquish Anima because you play low. People don't expect this, so they play they play into it a lot. Then a Mondo to get your plays extended and uh, to play on their turn a little bit. And IP, you can end on IP as well. Um, so obviously those are those are there. Next is the branded package. So these three. So obviously game one, you want to go for this guy the most. He is the uh, the broken monster in the deck. He gets you your Jalgen. He can't be used as a synchro, uh, as a fusion material, so he can't be super poly away. Um, the only issue with this card is it can get dropleted, uh, but not many people are playing board breakers, so that is not a big deal in my opinion. These are for going second. Uh, you can go to your Albion, send the Albaz, and whatever engine piece you need, and then synchro, I mean uh, fusion, using this card's effect by discarding a card to get, I mean, to get this card, and then you discard a card with this card. You know, you know the line, and then you get this guy. This is in back in the extra deck. Now you have an extra body where you can go ahead and ritual summon because it's a light monster. You can use your ritual spell to use this or Sephira, doesn't matter. But um, that's the branded package there. Uh, really good, won't change anything with that. Next package is your super poly targets because uh, it's kind of a spoiler, but I do play it in the side. Um, this is a super poly target. It's not a common one, but it is one technically. And then these you play. This is good against any of the fire decks. Good against the fire decks. Um, good in general. These are just targets you need. And they're easy to send off a pot of prosperity. So um, it's really not an issue when you pot of prosperity for six. And then this, you got a couple synchros here. You got Baron and uh, you have Baron and you have Chaos Angel. You can use, you can make this with Trius and uh, Low, and you can make this using your, you know, Diviner, 
Diviner send Diviner, use your trap to get Saphira out, Synchro into a, a Baron. Um, I've done that where I ended on two Omni Negates, like a Baron, Low, and Skull Guardian. So uh, these two are good. I would not take them out. And the last card is your uh, Sky Crisis. Um, this card never has won me. It's, I mean, in the grind game, it's really good. But I don't think it's as impactful as other people think it is. I think it's just a last resort if you need it. Um, but I'm keeping it in there as that last resort. I don't think it's worth not playing the card. Um, there's no other card I think will be as impactful if you're you know down in the dumps or you need a a last minute move. So that's the extra deck. And then the side deck. I am going to change one thing in the side deck that I was playing before. I made a last second change before the regional, which I kind of regret, but I'll tell you that in a second. So, so you got your lightning storms and your heavy dust, uh, harpy's feather duster. These are good going second cards. I think every side deck needs good going second cards, and I would not change that for um, for going forward. So I'm gonna keep those in there. These are not very common, but the spooky dogwoods are good in time. I realize in these regionals that a lot of people are reading cards and they don't really uh, understand what they're playing against. So in that instance where you're going into time where the game's really grindy, you need a way to win, especially if you're trying to top these events, Spooky Dogwood's a good option. So um, I won't change that. All right, and obviously the Super Poly, because you saw the targets in the extra deck. Super Poly is a great card, breaks boards. That's what my deck does. So if I'm going second, I'm definitely going to just put these in for more uh, board breaking potential. If the matchup makes sense, you know. These are the cards I put in last minute yesterday at the regional. It's the Drew's Worms and the Magma. These very much underperformed, and I should have thought about it before putting them in because I do play cash tier cards. So having this on board um, or using this as an interruption on their turn and then me trying to play on my turn, it was an issue because they would conflict with uh, me trying to special summon my cash terror monsters since there was a monster on board. So um, I would take these out and put in my Solemn Strikes that I had before. I think Solemn Strike is a great going first card. So next event I go to, I'm changing those out for Solemn Strikes. And then the last card obviously is uh, Solemn, I mean, uh, Summon Limit. Summon Limit's a great card. Um, it's obviously kind of toxic, but going forward, I, I think it is gonna get banned or limited to one. I'm fine with either, but if it's an option right now, take advantage of it. So there you have it, guys. That's the deck list. That's what you wanted. Um, I told you the changes I'm gonna make. I'm gonna continue playing this deck and there's a Hartford Regional coming up in two weeks. Definitely gonna be playing it there. So if you guys are there, make sure you come say hi if you want to. Appreciate you guys checking in and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks.